First of all, I would like to tell people to please check out Black Terry on Flickr.com, F-L-I-C-K-R.com for some absolutely amazing and fantastic excellent photographs from Triple Mania 20. The photographs are taken by Black Terry Jr. Please check out his photo set. They are really worth checking out, his tri- especially his Triple Mania 20 photographs. You can get them on, like I said, Flickr.com. You can also find the link on LuchaWorld.com's Facebook page. Now to the actual event, Triple Mania, and as I said, it was the biggest pay-per-view of the AAA Lucha Libre Mexican Professional Wrestling Organization, the biggest event of the year. The first uh, opening match of Triple Mania 20 saw Dark Dragon, Mini Charlie Manson, Sexy Star and Yuriko take on Fabi Apache, Phoenix, Octagon Cito and Pimpinella Escarlata in an 8 person tag team match. Some again, I've just what, uh, seen Black Terry's fo- Jr's photographs, some great action in this one. And Apache won the match for her team submitting Yuriko with an armbar. Now, as I said, following this opening match, Triple A paid homage to the promotion's founder, Antonio Pena. Uh, this was uh, following a full uh, march uh, commemorating his sad passing several years ago now and remember him as the founder, of course, of Triple A. And this has happened, of course, while the ring crew set up the steel cage for what would be the second match of the evening, a four-way Parajes Suicidas match, featuring the teams of Chessman and Juventud Guerrera, Extreme Tiger and Halloween, Jack Evans and Teddy Hart, and Joe Leader and Psychosis. And again, this was the coming together of former tag teams, now bitter rivals. This match was contested under escape rules in a steel cage, with all eight participants starting inside the cage, and after only one is left inside, that person will then wrestle his tag team partner in a lucha to a pesta, or a betting or wager match. Now, in this match, Psychosis allowed Halloween to climb on to the top of the cage, believing that he was going to dive back in onto his opponents. But instead, Halloween betrayed his Peros de Mal stablemate and become the first man to escape the cage. And he even was st- stood ringside for the rest of the uh, sh- for the rest of this match, eating some looks like some sweets. Again, you can see the picture on uh, Black Terry's Flickr page. Now it's. Dream Tiger and Jack Evans, the former AAA World Tag Team Champions, actually worked together against Psychosis and Teddy Hart, the other two Peris de Mal members in this match, but then were attacked by Juventud Guerrera, swinging a garbage can. Guerrera then became the second man to escape the cage and was followed very shortly after by Extreme Tiger, who actually dove from the top of the cage outside onto Halloween and Guerrera. Now this meant that the former Familia de Tuana was the first team to successfully avoid the Lucha Apuesta. This was actually followed by Psychosis turning on an attacking leader. As I said, these are uh, previous tag teams, now rivals, teaming, forced to team up again. And Psychosis and leader have actually had such a battle over the last several months. And of course, uh, Leader actually had publicly announced shortly prior to the event that he hoped to lose the match in order to get a shot at Psychosis's hair before escaping the cage. Now, Evans was the next to escape the cage, and this was after avoiding Teddy Hart's attempts to stop him. Hart then climbed to the top of the cage, and I've seen pictures of this as well, and dove onto Chessman and Leader with a moonsault before climbing back up the cage, eventually escaping, saving both himself and Evans from a hair versus hair match. Psychosis, realising that his attack on his own partner could cost him his hair, attempted to re-enter the cage, but was late as Chessman dropped Leader from the top of the cage before escaping himself, meaning that the former Hermandad 
187 partners were forced to face each other in a hair versus hair match, much later in the event. Now, after this match, none other than Vampiro made a surprise appearance, attacking and bloodying Chessman, who had to be stretchered out of the arena. Now, next up at this point, it was Joaquim Roldan who had announced the 2012 inductees into the AAA Hall of Fame. Pero Aguil, whose son would battle for the AAA World Heavyweight Championship later on in the night, and he was actually interrupted by Mascaro Anno 2000, who was accompanied by El Consejo member Argos. Now, Mascaro Anno 2000, remembering the match where he lost to Aguil, challenged his former rival to a hair versus hair match, although unfortunately he was turned down. It came to again in the next match now, where in the next match it was Octagon teamed with El Consejo members Cemental, El Texano Jr. and Toscano against La Parca and La Cico Circus members Monster Clown, Murder Clown and Psycho Clown. This was a Revelos Australianus 8-man tag team match. Now in the finish of this match, Octagon went for a low blow on La Parca, but accidentally called Semen, caught Semen, Semental instead. Parca wrote, then rolled up the surprise Octagon for the three count and the win. But of course after the match, Elkins out attacked Octagon before being chased away surprisingly by La Parca himself. I'll have to keep an eye on this as this Contejo getting rid of Octagon it sure looks like. But with the bad blood that's had between Octagon and La Parca, this may just be La Parca wanting to take out Octagon himself. We'll just have to keep an eye on that situation. Now after this a backstage segment featuring Dorian Roldan, Jeff Jarrett, Karen Jarrett, Conan and Kurt Angle, the fourth match of this event saw the uh, Lucha do a first match between Joe Leader and Psychosis. Now, despite Psychosis announcing before the event that he would be betting his hair in case of a loss in the uh, previous Parahe Suicidas match, it was announced that before that the, uh, the match started that it would be for Leader's hair, but for Psychosis's mask. Now, however, of course we've seen Psychosis who has lost his mask twice before in the X1 WCW didn't really get a chance to try to defend his mask as Leader suddenly attacked Psychosis before the bell and ripped his mask open, forcing the match to be changed to a hair versus hair match. Now, following an amazing hardcore brawl, again, please check out the I can't see enough the Black Terry pictures on uh, Flickr.com. It was a real hardcore brawl with ladders, garbage cans, everything, real even thumbtacks, which em- ended up embedded in Le- Joe Leader's back. Psychosis emerged victorious after performing with a kind of hurricane runner from the top of a ladder. And of course, like I said, including thumbtacks, because afterwards Psychosis continued the assault on his rival, dropping him into the pile of thumbtacks before having him shaved bald. The next match, or the fifth match of Triple Mania 20, was also a hair versus hair match. Now this was contested for the hairs of Joaquim and Dorian Roldan. Joaquim let his team of Electroshock and Ellie Park, who was wearing both were wearing uh, different coloured outfits. Ellie Park was wearing a really weird uh, an outfit, and Electroshock was actually not in his traditional red, but a, a white outfit into the arena, followed of course by Dorian and his team of Jeff Jarrett and Kurt Angle. The Rudo team, Jarrett and Angle, was accompanied by Karen Jarrett, Jeff's wife and of course the former wife of Kurt Angle. Now during the mass match, La Sociedad member and half of the AAA World Tag Team Champions, the Monster Abyss, ran out to interfere, but was actually stopped by a great dive from LA Park. Now, in the end, Abyss, though, recovered and it managed to attack Park, but then himself taken out by Electroshock, who followed up by countering Kurt Angle's finishing manoeuvre 
Yi Ang Wu Slav managed to pin uh, him for the win, facing, uh, forcing Dorian Rodan to actually have his head shaved bald. Now, however, before the shaving took place, I must say, Joaquim actually asked his son to disband La Sociedad and return to AAA, which led to Dorian apologising for his action and seemingly agreeing to disband the Rudolf stable. Now, Jeff Jarrett at this point uh, interfered and tried to protest, but was shut down by electroshock. Joaquim then announced that he did not want his son to be shaved, which of course drew the ire of LA Park. But then of course suddenly, Dorian actually attacked his father, while Jarrett and Angle did the same to electroshock in Park. Dorian then of course had his uh, then shaved his father's head before leading La Sociedad out of the ring. Certainly a huge feud there, a huge family feud uh, seemed to be continuing, although of course uh, Dorian actually seemed to be laying down uh, the actual peace, uh, like a peace treaty to his father. Obviously that's not happened. Obviously certainly keep an eye, there's several of these um, situations in La Sociedad and Triple A uh, stable that's certainly going to be uh, interesting to watch it as the members sort themselves out over the next few weeks I feel that may happen. Now the next match saw El Hijo de Peruguillo challenge El Macias. This was for of course the AAA World Heavyweight Championship. The champion was accompanied to the ring by Cibernetico while the challenger was accompanied by his stable mates Hector Garza, Garza and Taya Valkyrie. Now during the bloody brawl, the match was actually stopped for a moment as doctor as a doctor entered the ring to check on a cut on a Gio's head which looked quite uh, possibly bad and quite deep. Uh, though to be on, towards the end of the match, a Gio went for the illegal Martinet, which is actually a pile driver uh, which has been banned in uh, Mexico and AAA where as uh, after several uh, wrestlers uh, had serious neck and head injuries following uh, foul ups on the performing of the pile driver. Now, this would of course the illegal Martinez, the pile driver would lead to, I said, it's illegal so it would be an automatic disqualification. Uh, but a deal was stopped by Garza, leading to an argument between the two stablemates. Garza then attempted to hit El Macias with a steel chair, but accidentally hit Aguil instead. El Macios managed then to spear his challenger through a table for the win against this wild brawl and of course with the win he retained his AAA World Heavyweight Championship. Afterwards, Hall of Famer Pero Gio, the new Hall of Famer, and Los Perros de Mal members Halloween, Psychosis and Teddy Hart came out to check on the condition of the challenger. Garza attempted to do the same but was actually pulled away by those guys from Aguil, who actually turned and pointed to him and blamed him for the loss, and eventually put Los Perros de Mal actually helped the leader backstage, with uh, Garza falling behind. Of course, this brought brings me to the main event of the evening, another Lucha de Puesta match, and it would be Dr. Wagner Jr., accompanied by his brother Silver King, and his son, El Hijo de Wag Dr. Wagner Jr., to face Mascaro Anno 2000 Jr., who would be accompanied by his fa who was accompanied by his father, Mascaro Anno 2000. And this, of course, I said, would be a huge match. It's the main event of Triple Mania 20. And this match was actually interfered by uh, interfered in on several occasions, both by Mascaro Anno 2000. Cena and Silver King. The ma and when towards the end of the match, uh, Mascaro Anno 2000 interfered again, Silver King grabbed a steel chair and looked to actually attack him to defend his brother, but instead turned on Dr. Wagner Jr. As the fans uh, in attendance actually started to throw lots of rubbish uh, in the ring, it was actually getting really full of. Tr uh, uh, different bits of trash, El Hijo de Dr. Wagner Jr. entered and attacked his uncle and Mascaro Anno 2000, 
but then unfortunately was taken out by a recovering Moscano Anno 2000 Junior. The El Consejo member was now in full control of the match it seemed, but he was unable to finish Wagner Junior. Silver King, both Silver King and Moscano Anno 2000 Senior once again returned to the ring, however, so did El Hijo the Dr. Wagner Jr., who managed once again uh, to dive onto the two men with a flying kick, taking them out of the equation. And meanwhile, somehow, Dr. Wagner Jr. managed to get his hands on a glass bottle. He then broke it over the head of uh, Mascaro Anno 2000 and then pinned him to win the match and retain his uh, mask. Now, of course, I said it was a mask versus mask match, and following the match, Mascaro Arnold 2000 Jr. was forced to remove his mask and reveal that he was Angel Reyes, originally from Lagos de Moreno, Jalisco. And, of course, the 20th Triple Mania ended with celebrations of Dr. Wagner Jr. celebrating in the ring, of course, holding up the mask of Mascaro Anno 2000 Junior. It seemed from the pictures I've seen you can also see the main event, the mask vs mask match between Dr Wagner Junior and Mascaro Anno 2000 Junior on YouTube already. It's by a fan cam on the YouTube channel Saga for Forza 1. It's spelt S A G A F O R Z A one and all word word. Yeah, it's a fan cam video, it's well shot, well zoomed in and you can see quite a lot of the action, it's quite a good video. To be honest, looking at it, looking very quickly at the result, the event went pretty much as I thought. I knew that something was up that Doctor Wagner Junior may lo lose his mask at it. As you see, um Doctor Wagner Junior was actually turned on by his brother yet again by Silver King. These two guys have had more um, falling out and getting back together and falling out and get to back together pretty much any brothers in wrestling, even Undertaker and Kane, uh, they've had huge, lots and lots of falling outs and getting back together, you know, to and from being friends and being enemies. What would be interesting to see whether this would lead to a feud between Silver King and El Hijo de Dr. Wagner Jr., uh, who may be very angry with his uncle on turning uh, turning against his family and especially turning against his own father. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see uh, what the feuds are, who's going to challenge um, for El Macias' Triple A World Heavyweight Championship. Will it be El Hijo de Pero Aguil again? I know that he is very tenacious, that guy. He will not let things lie. And with Los Peros de Mal, still working with AAA promotion, even though they've got their own uh, small promotion, I can guarantee that that situation is far from finished. We're going to have to see, wait and see what Los Perros de Mal does when they get the chance to regroup. But overall, from what I've seen in the video and the pictures I've seen, it looks a good match. Looking forward to uh, the eventual uh, release of the video on to YouTube. It wasn't unfortunately uh, streamed live on pay-per-view or anywhere. First time in four years that that hasn't happened, but it seems a really good event. Looking forward, uh, like I said, to seeing these matches as the photographs show some absolutely spectacular action and dives. And I think it was a good, overall, it was a good solid uh, pay-per-view for Triple A. Triple Mania 20 is in the books. We'll have to keep an eye on what the plans are, like I said, many situations still unresolved from the major show. I didn't really expect them all to be resolved. There's too many wars, too many feuds, too many, too much blood, uh, bad blood between a lot of these guys. But an interesting paper you have to keep an eye on the situation on Triple Mania. And again, please check out Black Terry Jr.'s uh, photographs of Black Terry on Flickr.com, F-L-I-C-K-R.com.